Hey everybody, I am uh, was able to get out on the road, got a beautiful day, sun shining bright, and uh, y'all can see boats starting to come into the view here, and uh, y'all gonna recognize her, but uh, we got it. We have an opportunity to sit down with another legend, and uh, I've been wanting to meet up with him, and today's the day. So today we get to speak with Eddie Furman, Captain Eddie, and uh, so... Eddie, uh, we've been wanting to be able to sit down with you and everything and uh, let you tell us your story about growing up and working on the water and what your favorite was and all. So, you were born and raised in Bow Island, weren't you? No, I was born and raised in Fox Hill, Memphis City. I started working on the water when I was 11 years old. Oh, boy. And I used to horse off of the bow with the boat to Opal Bay with my daddy and Robert Firth. Yeah. And they give me what I call it, I can sell for myself. Right. <laughs> no. Well, there's a I lot enjoy, of... I enjoyed it, and I, I still enjoy it. But the, there's a lot of people on here, so tell them who your daddy was, too. Some people Harvey, won't know. Harvey Furman. Yeah. Yeah. Jim yeah. Jim yeah. Jim yeah. Jim. That's it. There you go. So, I mean, I'm old enough that I knew your daddy, while, you know, but... Uh, he, he was a Jim Beam, too. <laughs> oh, boy. But go ahead. I didn't want to write. I just wanted to add that in yeah, so people yeah. know. But yeah. like I said, I worked out on it. Worked there for seventy-four years. Then I got being sick. The doctor and my son told me I couldn't work it no more. You and Doctor Toy. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's been up and down since, but I, I take one day at a time. Yeah. No. That's right. Well, you're looking good. You're still doing, looks like you're doing good to me. They told me I'd probably find you out here cutting the grass. <laughs> no, it's, I have good days and bad days. Sure. No bad ones, it is good ones, but it's, I still go and come like a want. That's right. When uh, you let me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, time always brings change. Uh -huh. Time always brings change. Yeah, it brings change. But... All right, let's go back when you started working on the water. I said I worked off and on. I quit school when I was in the 10th grade, and I wanted to work with my daddy on a boat called a John Tom. The old man Tom Messick and little Tom Messick, I don't know if you know them or not, they owned the boat. She was on the shore and my daddy bought her. The 31 foot square stern boat. Uh huh. You no. Know, she, she was a tough old thing, but she didn't even have a boot pump on her like they got now. Well, no, we use hand pumps. Yeah, I use hand, hand pumps. pumps. Hand pumps. <laughs> yep. If you didn't have that, well, you didn't pump her out at night, Tom. Nothing. We didn't worry about it. Right. I don't know. When when they did when they did start having electric pumps and everything, Daddy he he had one, but he would have to hook it up to pump. He would not let it have no float on that because he didn't want that to get hung up and run his battery down. Melvin Ward had a boat called the Margaret. He used to pump her out with a quart can. Yeah, right. Never pump. had a pump on it. Huh? Never had a pump on it. And then when Richie took her in the bay, she did not have no pump on it. Uh huh. But, but they don't build boats like they used to either. No, that's for sure. Yeah. No, it's, no, I'll go down to the boat every now and then when it's coming in, just see them coming in. Yeah. I'll on a dock, set there. Mm -hmm. So I said, What are you doing down here? I said, Well, there's a lot better down here than it is up there. So, oh, boy. But you know how that is. Yeah. I always tell everybody I need some fresh salt air and some salt water. Yes. So what was your favorite thing? Huh? What was your favorite thing? Hand tongue and oysters? Hand -tongue and or? Oysters. Okay. Look, look forward to the first October. Go up in, me and my daddy would load a little, little boat he had at the last day, the Grace. Load of toys and be home by 12 o'clock. Yeah. 300 bucks of oysters. And sell them to a buy boat? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, all, all of them dead and going now. Yeah. Well, I, I James like... James Burton was the one we sold to most. I like to call them market boats, but... Uh, yeah, pe that's, that's what I... That's <laughs> people I'm, call them buy boats now, so I still say, say it for them, but to me... A lot to, uh, 
Buck Forest on the on is. So Jennings Burton was one of the main Jennings ones you Burton sold to? On the uh, Estelle Leonard. Uh-huh. <coughs> Ward Brothers was in there, won't they? Ward Brothers. It would be 30 market boats on rack shows. Yeah. All you do is drag back, stop the one and put out. Just drag to an office. Uh -huh. That's where you put them out. You drag down, put your horses out, drag to the next one, put your horses out. Yeah. Did y'all work out of Minchville mainly? Yeah. Or? yeah, everybody was out of Minchville. When Steve was there? No, when I first went there, Arthur Holloway was there. He, Arthur Holloway owned that store then. Mm -hmm. okay. Steve, I don't know if he rented it or bought it. Right. But then he took it over. And then they had a, a color fellow Charles that run it for him. Uh-huh. Which... Uh, so you could walk across the creek from ba boat to boat, rafting up. Well, see, it, 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 in Deep Creek, then it, it wasn't nothing but a mud hole. Was all it was there. Uh -huh. The work yacht club wasn't not even there. Okay. It was a mud flat there. Uh huh. But when Hazel come, all the boats went down on that mud flat, went on top of that hill. James River first boat was at the top of the hill. Uh. -huh. You know how they got her down? Uh-uh. Went to have a pound pole and slid them down. Wow. Bunch of the men did. I hear that. Didn't hurt a thing. There you go. That's good. So, would you have a favorite rock out there? Or? Back then, me and my daddy, we would work what we call Thomas. Just down there where you working at. We went to Emma and the well for the boat the first month. You'd go to rack shows, then you'd go to the V-Rock, go to the V-Rock on a, a part of James River. Mm -hmm. Small horse and stuff. Mm -hmm. they, they don't even call them by the rocks anymore today is what I was told. No. That's gone, huh? Uh, did, no, you were afraid now to tell did, somebody did, 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 you, you're down around Gun Rock or something. They don't know where to where you're at. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the inspectors don't even know where the rocks are. Oh, boy. Well... Like I said, time always brings change. Did y'all stay on the boat during the week and go home the weekend? Y'all went home every day? The only time we stayed on the boat in 74, 175, when they had to uh, keep on on up here, mm -hmm. we had to go to Potomac River. Okay. And then, uh, that was a rough place. Mm. See boats sink, going across there. Wow. One old collar fella had an old boat, and he had one of their wham. When they started back across, they started with the swamp. We couldn't have wanted to be even back across there. I hear that. So, you, did you crab pot some, didn't you? Huh? Didn't you crab pot some? Yeah. <laughs> did you, uh, you work out on the bar, or where did you mainly crab pot at? I would crab from the mouth of Back River up to about middle way Ballast Green. Okay. On the offshore, but not, not in on the shore water. Right. Yeah. Well, I know you was out there when we were. Yeah, do you? <coughs> Catch him a barrel of, barrel of crab for $3. I hear that. <laughs> you don't no. know it. Yeah. <laughs> but $3 would buy a little more then than it will now. Yeah, you yeah. fish them twice a day. Uh huh. talking about crab and he bought the V stern boat he had the Lessie H. Had a crab pot puller and all on it. I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Crab pot puller went out and we was off at the thimble crabbing. Uh -huh. I said, Daddy, we need a crab pot puller. He said, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I tell people all the time I was the crab pot puller. Yeah. <laughs> this crap I pull, I got oil in it every day. <laughs> uh, uh, the thimble and that tide pulling them by hand. Yeah. Oh Mike gosh. Musel was with me then. You know Mike Musel? Yeah. We shot an eagle pot in the middle of the crab pot for the good eagles putting the crab pots. We got to hold that eagle pot one day. He said, okay, I can't pull it up. I can't pull it up. There's too many crabs. God, the eel was sticking everywhere. <laughs> Uh, and you you couldn't catch the eels that was up there then. Right. But, uh, Did you ever do any clamming or anything? Yeah. Okay. 
I claim. He claimed me and him claimed double rig for a couple of years. Double rig in that boat. Had right it right on that boat there. All right, now we, we'll bring the boat up. Y'all recognize her, don't you? The Lady Nan. Yep. So what year, do you remember what year you had her built? 1991. 91. I hear that. Jimmy Drew built her. Uh-huh. He built the hull of them. My uncle put the top works on her. Okay. Somebody said, Jimmy didn't build that pile of hose. I said, no, not hardly. Uh-huh. Jimmy done, Jimmy done me a big favor. He talked called me one day, said, I'll build you a boat. I said, I can't afford it. He said, you furnish the lumber, I'll furnish the labor. And he did, didn't he, Nate? He did. I hear that. She was built in the junk, back in the junkyard back of Pete's. Wow. That's why she was built that. At Pete's? At the junkyard. Yeah. yeah. That's that right. she down there in the junkyard it's a brick house down towards the railroad tracks right i lived there and she was built right next door right in my yard i uh, hear that T told pete to d dig a hole so i could turn her over put the bow in it he dug a hole big enough to put the boat in <laughs> <laughs> so where'd y'all splash her at when Ridge, you put her in Ridge Bear. Ridge Bear. Ridge Bear. i hear that she went down, went down Chapter Avenue. Donna had her on the back of a trailer. Uh huh. Yeah. Like to got in trouble. He did. But Donna I had said, some, yeah. I had a very good friend with a little bit of authority. When the man, the police department showed up, says, "Y'all know y'all supposed to have escort us, yes sir, but we're, you know, fighting time on the tide. If we let the tide get out too far." We ain't gonna be able to get the boat off the trail and have guys sit here. Mm -hmm. And then this other person went over and told him, said, Sir, I said, What is your name? And he gave him his name. He said, I want your badge number two. He said, Because I'm calling you sergeant. Y'all have a nice day. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 oh, he was Mr. Shipyard. He, he the one told me he gave me permission to go in there around the boats and go clam. And I said, No, I ain't going in there. The hangs and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Some of the boys in the road that day that went in there. All right. So, mm -hmm. so you ain't never race her, did you? Yeah. Boy. <laughs> you didn't like racing none, did you? Yeah, I loved it. Never had no power in it, but it was, she was doing right good. You, with, the, with the old engine, the first engine we put on her, she'd run about 21 knots. With, with the one that went, the last one was in her, was on 18 years. And she's sitting down there in Nate's yard now and we're running around with our salt water on them. And she's carrying 50 pound oil pressure. I hear that. You was racing at Yorktown and everywhere, won't you? Huh? Yeah. You were racing when they were running at Yorktown and everywhere, yeah. won't you? The year I, I raced at Yorktown, I beat that boy. Nick that Rollins. boy. They said I didn't think she'd go that fast. He said, but the further you went, the more you beat me. Uh huh. She just kept on getting up, huh? Got a picture of that in there now. Eh? What'd you have in her then? 871. That's all she's ever had. Yeah. The last one she had in was a California 871. It was 185 horsepower, all it was. Right. I know. You've seen the inside of a Detroit liner, right? Mm hmm. With the vents in it, about like that. Right. The California emissions motor. Is about the size of the end of my finger. That's all the vents are in it. Wow. And they had, instead of having N series injectors, they had C series injectors. Uh -huh. And. She had N50s, wasn't it? C45s. 45s. C45 injectors. Right. <laughs> That's she had, but. She returned 1800. I put 90s in, I got her up to 2100. Yeah. And when I took her out, she still had the 90s on her. Mm hmm. But you could open her wide open and run her all day long. Oh, she yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's the funny part about that boat with that last 871 in. My brother had a boat named the Sassy Girl. Mm hmm. Well, 871 Natural, 871 Natural. Who did you pair up at the boat races with? Oh, boy. Uh huh. We jumped him a half a boat length out of the hole, and when we went across the finish line, she was a half a boat length ahead of him. <laughs> what she'd get, she'd give him. If we never went, won another race, that was the. Yeah, that that was it. Yeah, he made the brag, said, "I let him beat me. 
I said, you ain't all that nobody beat you. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, you know, it don't get no better than a Detroit. No. You get some wet exhaust well, you on can there. Find them but oh, you I find know. Them last no but I'm saying, for my preference, yeah. you get a Detroit with some yeah. wet exhaust, get that wound up tight. There ain't nothing sounds no better than that. I asked Joe DeRo one day. To, he was one of the boat racers. He beat the uh, Stephanie Marie. I said, Jody, how fast you turn? Her? He said, 2,300. I said, Jody, I ain't going to tell you it on there what, you, what he said. <laughs> I said, Jody, you are, hey, Jody, how fast? He said, 3,100. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. 3,100. Jody Rowe had some fast boats now. He did. And back in the day, he had them old 440 Chrysler Marines, didn't he? Way back in the day. Before diesel got so popular. Bob Jr. put a 440 in that boat he had. Didn't Sharon K. Sharon K. And I didn't know the boat was as big as it was, but me and him sat underneath the stern of them and hooked the exhaust up. And he raised Michael D. Mike George had a high performance Ford in the El Murray Yvonne. And uh, he went by Mike Diggs so fast, made him mad. Uh, somebody told me you. <clears throat> used to take the gutter pipe for the bilge pump and put it out front and have that sitting right at the carburetor. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, we, I have seen one of the boats was top dog, but he didn't do it, but the man before him had it. I seen him take the propane bottles from the back of the cab and set them in front of the engine box and take the hose and run to the breather and turn propane to them. Wow. Seen the head blow off of a 671. Huh. Darn. I've, I've, I've seen that stuff happen. People do some crazy stuff. I can tell you some <laughs> stuff, but I ain't gonna go that far. Kenny Blanchard pulled that 671 and reel really in with, uh, pro with propane to them. When uh, Lil' Joe had them. Yeah, Joe, Joe had them. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's the one I'm talking about there. Maria Lynn when Lil' Joe blew it. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. You, you know where that boat was built at? Where? The old Hunts Oil Company. Really? The Maria Lynn. She built that back behind the sale shop. Okay. Joe, Bl Joe Blanchard built it. I didn't know that. And she was all my nail nail. He a bunch of nails. Send them out. Could there be half iron? Put a magnet to him. I don't want him. And she sat on the shore down there. How long? Long time. Long time. The bottom never come off for nothing. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well. But the Marillion's over at the Marina Cove now. Yeah, I know. I see her over there. You're supposed to rebuild her. That's where I haul out at. Marina Cove? Yeah. Hard to be. I know it. Yeah, me and Earl and get along pretty good. Yeah, I, I get along good with Earl. I do. But uh, so was was there some favorite catch, big catch, or a big storm you were in, or anything like that? Well, the most wind I've been in, I come out of uh, Cheesem Creek. I was in the grease, and I was trying to, a storm come out there, and they blow the engine hose box off. Of, Huh. Going with the wind. Wow. And it hit me coming up back rubber. And Foot Stiggs and then was standing on the dock watching me. He said he ain't going to make it up here. Said she was just going up, coming down. Uh huh. You know, you know, the man says, you take care of a boat, she'll take care of you. That's right. Yeah. But so when it slacked up, I'd come on in. I didn't have no wind in the top on Uh huh. I was 394. Right. You know, it blew to uh, 74 mile an hour. Coming up back up. Wow. I come up on uh, Hampton Roads in the Leslie when they blowed 80 some mile an hour. Huh. Yeah, it was, it was clocked at 72 mile an hour when y'all rounded Old Point. Yeah. That's hurricane strength right there. 72 mile an hour is what it claimed at uh, Old Point Comfort. Right. And she, she wanted to go there. 318 gas motor. And, and she's going to put the Engine the put. box flying off to the side. Water spray come over the side, and she go. Pit, 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 pit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't make it. Yeah. What was the 
the Katy uh -huh. that the uh, back porch. That was over in front of the shipyard. Over in front of the shipyard, back that porch. That floated over top, the the, going with yeah. the wind, yeah. floated over top the boat. Darn. And I'm sure they had it bolted on there. Yeah. Hey, mm. Half inch legs, you know. Yeah. Carriage bolts and well, legs. You, you always had it so it almost swivel if it comes up. Right. When it come up, it, it went across the top of the cab. Uh. Wow. So, is you there? Do some, you do some foolish things when you're working out there, though. You'll go some, you know. Yeah. That's right. He knows he's been with. He knows he'd been with his daddy more than once. Said, <laughs> oh, Times yeah. he wish he was home still between the blankets. Oh boy, I tell you what, I love crab drudging. I loved it. I did too till the last year. I crab hunting boy. Mm hmm. I lost a hundred and ninety-two crab pots. Huh. I took them up and I told my dad, "Say, are you gonna crab?" He said, "Yeah." I said, "Here they are." Yeah. And I had a man. I had a crab to come to him. Said a good crab, but don't lose no crab pots. Uh. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. But well. uh, tell him, tell him about when the key pone hit and we were working my little boat on Hatton Bar. <laughs> when the key pone hit in James River, it was 74, I think it was. Right. We were in a little boat he had deal. You, Miss Laurie, then, wasn't Yeah. It? She was 35 foot. Wasn't 30. It? And Jim is all you could put. Every three pots will fill a fish box up. Yeah. Three pots to a wooden he, fish box. Mm. Yes, seven, eight barrels lined up on the side. Of Twelve. Twelve. Twelve barrels. And look coming up in shore, comes Charles Jones and did prowler. He was picking them up one barrel at a time. Back to sell thing, you said it was. Ten, but yeah, he, he said, said you wrong. I throw twelve over boy. <laughs> uh. He stopped me one day going in the Hatton Creek. I had a bushel of crabs inside my engine house. He saw him just checking. I said, Yeah, just like Austin. He said, Yeah. But when I got them crabs in, they was cooked. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't had to steam them, did you? Arthur Perry Thomas out of Seaford, you know. Him. I knew Arthur Perry. They got him. He was grabbing old cars from the shipyard. Was he in the Perry Lynn or the he Helen T? Had the boat to Perry Lynn. Yeah, his and daddy built that boat. He made a shoot. He was sliding them back. Uh -huh. Somebody reported him on it. They come right aboard and went right to the shoot. Wow. Man. I hear that. Mm hmm. Tell you about the nine months. Get him to tell you about the nine months he quit the water. All right. Tell me about the nine months you quit working on the water. The shipyard. <laughs> I went there one day and the foreman was giving me a fit. They was going to put me through a foreman's job. Started say, I said, you can't find me. He said, why? I said, I just quit. <laughs> <laughs> Kelso Hunt. I don't know if you know him or not. Mm -hmm. He's right there. Down there. Right across from where the uh, ET service station was down that road there. Look, you've been working on a... He begged me to stay there. I said, nope, I've had enough. My boat was working Jane Road. I wasn't getting nothing out of her. Not a cent. And I went back working Jane Road. Well, when you work in the water... That's the mistake I ever made. When you work in the water and you go somewhere like that, it don't take you long to figure out that you're going back. See, I was getting, making $88 a week. When I was in there. One of the guys on here just left the water to go work at a port where they're shipping containers and all. Oh. And I mean, I'm sure he's going to do well with it. But we, we're all counting. We're all wondering how long it's going to be before he gets back on that boat. We told him, don't sell your boat. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you do what you got to do. But yeah, just so. I, I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I got rid of my boat. Decided to get away from it. Hey. Yeah. And uh, I wish I'd never sold my first old boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a night owl. I hear that. Oh boy. Well, look, we've been on here quite a while. And uh, so, is there anything you'd like to say to everybody before we wrap it up? 
Well, I hope everybody's doing it even as good as I'm doing. Yeah. And that's, and like I said, my wife died 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a take up. Right. But she'd been sick for 40, 41 years. When they, give, they give her six months to the year in 73, and she died in 2013. I hear that. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, we we all we've been wanting we've been wanting to sit down and talk with you, you know, y'all are I I don't I don't think I offend any of y'all, but I call y'all the old salt. You know what? You're right. Y'all the old salt. So we gotta uh -oh. talk to the old salt. That's where we all learn from. What's that? What's that? Hello. That's oh, my great, that's my great grandson. Hey, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? Good. What do you come over here for? To go to work tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Well, we really enjoyed talking with you, Eddie. Nice talking to and, you. And uh, you looking good, you know. So we hope you all the best. And I like to say I feel good some days, some days I don't. Yeah, that's right. I still get up about three o'clock. You do three o'clock. I call you about three thirty, four o'clock every morning. <laughs> Old habits are hard oh, to break. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a long clock either. All right. But my kidneys make me get up. <laughs> oh boy, I hear that. <coughs> well, I I'm. When I was in the hospital last time, my, my kidneys quit, didn't they, Nate? My kidneys quit the last time I was in Riverside. They down to 14%. Mm. And they done something, got them going. I went to Riverside Rehab. I went in there, I couldn't walk. When I come out, I could walk just as I did. They hooked the jumper cables up to you, didn't they? Gave you a jump oh, start. A lot of good looking girls in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, now we know the secret. Uh huh. Now that's something I would have expected from Carol Melvin. <laughs> yeah, I know it. The thing I was, they was giving me a bath every morning. Oh boy, oh, man. See, they don't, they don't delete pay some of this. I know. Stuff. Look, I don't want to have to edit this out now. <laughs> One of them was a little fellow painter. She'd come here every morning. She didn't come on. I said, "What's the matter?" I said they shipped her to another one. They didn't. Nobody comes to the same place every day. You know? mm -hmm. And they put you on rehab like that. They, you done your therapy. Y'all couldn't go come in till four o'clock on there. Yeah. Your therapy. You had six treatments. Uh -huh. Six different people. Mm -hmm. Up and down the hall in a wheelchair. And when three o'clock come, I said, give me a cold, a warm blanket. I'm going to take a nap. Come on, man. So. Well, I'm glad y'all got the lady Nan sitting here and everything and able to sit here with you. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, I know everybody on here has too. And uh, so we want to thank you. you know, no, I appreciate you coming by. Yes, absolutely. So. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap this How up. How old is your little girl, girl granddaughter? And my granddaughter, she's eleven now. Uh huh. Growing like I a weed. When she first started coming board your boat. Yeah. Uh huh. Mango. Come here, mango. Come here. So, all right. Well, we thank all of y'all for watching, and uh, we appreciate it. And you know, we'll see where uh, where where I end up next time. But you know, this is a special one we've been wanting to try to do, and I'm glad I had the opportunity. So thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Nate. You know, and uh, thank you all for get, sp giving me some of your time and uh, telling your story. We, we like to hear your story with your words, your way. You know, that's what we want. right, but I'll say it anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. That's it. All right. Thank you.